Hello, this is Tiffany with Tiff Dance Fit, and I am here to take you through some key areas of the body in terms of performing stretching. Obviously, flexibility training is a very pivotal, very key um, part of fitness that you would need to incorporate along with all your other forms of training um, to help improve your activity level performance, maintain it, uh, injury prevention, joint health, relaxation, help you with your balance, you name it. So don't, please do not forget to include flexibility in your training. So I'm gonna target some key muscle groups here. I'm gonna take you through some stretching um, from a um, floor position, because I, I like to start out with floor because it helps isolate just that key area by itself. Um, also, for um, I have a chair in the background where I will show you a position of doing these stretches and sitting. And then I will take you um, also through these stretches and standing. So we are going to do um, on the floor first. The first muscle that I like to talk about in terms of stretching is your hamstring, which is the back of your thigh. Now, feel free to have a stretch strap. If you have a stretch strap, if you have a towel, if you don't have those, it's okay but I just wanna make sure that you get the gist of what to do in terms of getting the benefit of the stretch. Typically with stretch, you wanna be able to feel the, a slight discomfort um, in that muscle area itself. Um, it should be slightly uncomfortable, enough for you to just tolerate and then hold at least for 15 to 30 seconds. So I'm not gonna sit here and go through all these positions, hold for that long, I'm just gonna tell you about them and then you can use this video as a way to help you uh, practice it on your own time and work on those stretches. Okay, so like I said, the first muscle I'm going to talk about is hamstrings, which is the back of your thigh. I typically on the floor, you're going to lie flat on your back. You can have a mat on the floor if you want. I'm going to use my leg that's closest to you so you can see. Um, the, the back leg away, you can have it bent for those who need that protection for their lower back. Uh, but the, the leg towards you is the one I'm going to address. The goal is to get the leg all the way extended to the straight to the ceiling if you can. If not, and you only go so high, that's fine. You can use a strap or something to help with that. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna place a strap around my leg here, around my foot, and I'm gonna hold on to it like this. Now, what I'm watching for when people stretch their hamstring, first of all, you gotta have your knee straight. Okay. The back, the hamstring helps flex the knee. It helps bend the knee. So in order to stretch it, you gotta be able to extend the knee all the way up. Okay, the other thing it does is it helps extend the hip. So I'm flexing my hip here, raising my leg up to get the full stretch of the hamstring. And the goal, of course, is to try to bring it toward the chest of your body, bring it towards you, okay? So you can stretch it this way. Um, this is a good way to stretch it. That way you're lying flat on your back and you don't have to worry about any stress or strain anywhere else. So you're just isolating it here. If you don't have a strap, I encourage you to grab behind the um, calf or behind the hamstring, but not in the joint because it'll make you want to bend your knee. So just make sure you grab in the middle back of the thigh or middle of the calf. If you can reach your ankle, that's great. If you can reach your foot, you can, that's great too, okay? So this is a good way to stretch your hamstring, okay? Um, what some people also do is they also stretch it in sitting. So me facing you, you can have this other leg just bent in and just focus just on one side, making sure your toes are straight up and you are actually facing your leg and you just reach forward towards your ankle or your toes to stretch down. Now, if you can't reach that far, your hands could be along your side and you're working on going towards your foot. You can do that. You can grab your leg, your ankle, grab your toes or work your way down. For those y'all who are advanced, if you have a, like a yoga block or something, you can put that there and reach past and stretch that way too. It's a good way to stretch the back of your thigh, okay? Now, if you're not on the floor and you're sitting, you take your chair. I'm gonna sit sideways so you can see me. I'm gonna use my other leg this time. Usually I have people sit toward the edge of the seat. Their leg is extended. And as long as they're safe and secure in the chair, they will reach down toward their toes this way. And they have their other leg here for support to stretch down and stretch the back of their thigh, okay? Now, if you're outside and you just got through running or jogging or doing something outside and you don't have a chair and you don't wanna be on the ground, you gotta stand, or if you just came off a treadmill, then depending on the level where you're able to position your foot, you can actually take your leg and place it up on an object like so, still with the leg straight and stretch toward it and according to height and what you're able to tolerate, is the same thing there too, okay? So that's a good way to stretch your hamstrings. 
The next stretch I'm going to talk about is your glutes, your tush. A good way to stretch that, starting on the floor. If you want a stretch strap or no stretch strap, I'm not going to use it this time. Okay, I'm going to stretch this side since it's closest to the camera. I'm going to lie on my back. <clears throat> Take this leg and I'm going to cross it ankle above knee, if you can see that. Okay, so this leg is crossed, all right, and relaxed and down. I'm taking my hands and I'm going to reach through my other leg here that's bent, reach through, back the thigh, and bring this leg toward my chest this way. Now, with this leg being close, I can take my elbow and press against it to help it turn out a little bit more and get the stretch that way. And this is a good way to stretch your glutes, okay? So you can do it this way. The same way that you can do it in sitting, if I was to grab a chair here, I'm going to sit and face you. Have a seat here. Take that leg. Cross it ankle above knee, just like so here. Try to get the leg as flat as you can, parallel to the floor, and you'll just lean, tilt forward, bend forward to get that stretch in your glute there too. If you don't have any of these things and you're you might want to find something solid that you can hold on to, some good surface or structure that you can hold on to. And you can hold on to it like so, take the leg here, and then go into a sitting position and stretch forward that way. And that way you have something you can hold on to for balance. Okay? So you stretch both sides in terms of your glutes. Okay? Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is the quad muscle, which is the front of your thigh and the hip flexor combined because these two, I mean, this, this muscle is one that, that you can easily stretch in correctly if you're not sure on how to position yourself, okay? So to take this one on the floor, I'm gonna face this way and I'm gonna use this leg this time. I'm actually going to lie flat on the floor, like so. You can rest your head on your, um, on your hands, your forehead or whatnot. If you need a stretch strap or a towel, you can do that. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'll show you how it looks. <clears throat> I'm just going to put the strap around the ankle of my foot, turn sideways here, okay? And all I'm going to do, have my legs together, okay, the other leg is relaxed down, and I want to bend and pull this leg to where my heel is going toward my tush. Now, if you can grab your leg, then that's fine, okay? You can do that. Grab your foot here, and then bend that leg toward your tush on that side, okay? Now, what I watch for on this stretch, whenever I'm around someone, I'm watching their hip. Your hip should not be coming off the floor. You should be able to press your hip all the way down into the floor while you're pulling this leg back, okay? Because the hip flexor and the quad, they both assist with straightening the leg and flexing the hip. Well, we flex our hips a lot with sitting, running, walking, you name it. We always go through a hip flex motion. So to get the full stretch, you got to be able to go the opposite direction. So in this case, I will be bending my knee and I'll be extending my hip, which means I'm pressing my pelvis and my hips into the floor as I'm bending my leg back. And you should feel the stretch throughout the whole front part of your thigh. And if you're really tight in your hip flexors, you may end up feeling it right in the front of your hip or even into your abdomen area because that's where that muscle starts in that area. Okay. So that's a good way to stretch that. Now, Sitting is a little bit more challenging, but that doesn't mean you cannot stretch it. It may not be a full stretch, but you can get a little bit out of it, okay? So sitting in a chair, I would basically turn sideways, holding onto the back of the chair. I would typically drop this leg straight down, like so, to assist here. And then I would slightly lean back, just tightening my stomach, and get the stretch here. If you want to get a deeper stretch and feel it more, I'll raise the arm up with it as well. So it's almost like a half kneeling assisted on a chair. <laughs> that way, for some of y'all, you're not able to be on your knee. Now, if you can be on your knee and you don't have a chair, this is a good way to stretch that as well. Just like this, just shifting your weight forward. Okay, let me scoot over just a little bit so I don't hit the chair. And shift this way. It's a good way to stretch your hip flexor. Okay? Now, standing. Standing is going to be tricky because typically, I say it's tricky because not, not many people stretch it correctly because they're standing. So when you're standing or holding on to something, you're outside or wherever you are, you want to grab your leg, okay? And you want to make sure the knee is down, okay? Still bending that leg, bringing your heel to your tush. But what I'm watching for, again, you don't want your hip flexed. 
it's easy to stretch this like this and not get the full stretch. So you really want to make sure your knee is pointing downward and that your hips are pressed forward so that you get the full stretch of the front of your thigh and also in the front of your hip. Okay, so just watch out for those type of stretches uh, positioning wise to get an accurate stretch. Okay, um, the next one is a calf stretch. Now you can incorporate the calf, which is the uh, back of your lower leg, the muscle in the back of your lower leg. We use that a lot to push off with our feet with walking. Now you can already stretch that when you stretch your hamstrings. You can be holding your hamstring stretch and flexing your foot to where your toes are pointing at your nose. And you'll feel the stretch not only in the back of your thigh, but you'll also feel it in your calf as well. So you can do it that way by, you know, knocking out two birds with one stone, the hamstring and the calf stretch. And you can do the same thing in sitting. Now what's good about this is for anyone who has any tightness in their calf or, or plantar fasciitis or anything like that, um, you may want to get a little bit more of a deeper stretch and isolate it even more than just the hamstring alone. So I usually place my heel on a towel or on a strap to where it's on my foot like so. Make sure I move it back enough so you guys can see me. So it's like this. And then as I lean forward, I'm going to pull on the strap. Now you notice my foot pulls back even further. And then I will angle it a little bit downward to kind of flex my toes back as well. And that way I feel the stretch, not only just in the calf, but across the whole bottom surface of my foot as well, okay? So that's a good stretch that you can do in terms of just isolating the calf by itself. Um, same thing in sitting. If you're sitting in a chair, you can just use a strap or use your hand and just grab your foot and pull back, okay? Now when it comes to standing, you stand with an object, holding onto an object, a wall or whatever. You can stretch it a couple ways. Um, now with the calf stretch, I'm going to stretch it based off of your knee being straight, extended, okay? So you can hold on to something here, separate your feet. Now I'm focusing on the leg that's in the back, so you want that leg back and behind you. You want the heel down, and you're going to go like in a lunge position, bending the front of your leg, feeling that stretch in your calf like this, okay? Now if you have like a step or a block or something that you can elevate off of a platform, to where your heels can drop down, you can stretch it like that as well. I don't have that, but that doesn't mean you, you can't do that. But this in itself is just a good stretch by itself, just holding it here. And then of course you can just change sides. And then if you want, you can have both feet and you can just practice alternating your feet, okay? So that's a stretch that you can do for the calf. All right, low back. My favorite with low back always is lying down, so I'm just gonna stick with that. So all I do is I lie on my back <clears throat> and I'm set here and I just alternate. I'll just bring one knee in toward my chest. Now, if you notice, I'm grabbing the back of my legs as opposed to the top. That way, if you have any knee issues or anything, you're not putting any stress or strain on your knee. You just grab the back of your thigh and just bring your knee in toward your chest. Hold it for a couple seconds, sit it down and then just change up to the other side. So that's a good way to stretch your lower back. You can also bring both knees in at the same time and stretch your lower back this way. Have your hands down by your side. Do some slight rotation, kind of loosey goosey here for your lower back as well too. But just to hold the stretch, you can do it this way or one leg at a time, okay? So that's what I would recommend for lower back stretch, um, a good lower back stretch um, by itself, okay? Chest. <clears throat> now chest, you can sit or you can stand um, when you're doing a chest stretch, basically I'm going to turn in this angle here, sit up nice and tall, relax your shoulders, take your hands, place them behind your head. If you can, um, you don't have to interlock your fingers, but you can place them here. And the main thing here is about sitting up nice and tall, having your head up, chin parallel to the floor, and it's about your elbows, moving those elbows back and behind you. And for some of y'all, this might be a challenge. It might be too tight. It might be hard for you to do that. So, or to hold it like this and get the stretch. So another way you can do this is actually, this is wonderful because the way my wall is set up here, you can actually go to the corner of a wall, placing your hands like you're about to do a push up against the wall. Now I'm in the corner of my wall here and I'm set like this and my feet are back behind me. So I'm just gonna show it from a flat surface. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lean in toward the wall. So I'm gonna lean in toward the corner and feel myself stretching out my chest this way, okay? 
and that's a good stretch, especially for the upper body. Um, if you are been working at a desk and you're rounded over or driving and things like that, that's a good way to get like a corner stretch in the corner to stretch out your chest. So those are the two things I would say that you can do for that. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is shoulders. Mainly, um, we'll stretch the back of the shoulders, uh, get a little bit of the upper back, but I definitely wanna stretch the front part with your shoulders as well. But typically for a shoulder stretch, you can sit, you can sit in a chair, you can stand. You don't have to really hold on or do any positioning for this one either. All you gotta do is sit up nice and tall. Just make sure you're nice and long or stand nice and tall. Take the arm, make sure it's parallel to the floor and it's not too high, but it's right off in line in line with your shoulder, shoulder level, okay? I like to turn my hand to where my palm is facing inward and toward the body and go across my body this way, relaxed. My other hand is gonna go above the elbow, not on the elbow or below it, because you'll make it bend, but above the elbow to support. Relax your shoulders and just pull right across here. And what you're getting here is a stretch in the back of your shoulder, your shoulder blades. Okay, so that's a good stretch there. Okay, and this is to stretch the back of your shoulder. And then of course I would change it and do the same thing on the other side. What to mainly watch for is that you don't raise your shoulders, but keep your shoulders relaxed and down. Okay, now to stretch the front of your shoulders, depending on your hand positioning, you can place your hands to where they're facing you. They can turn out or turn backwards, either way, whatever is comfortable in, front, in terms of your hand placement. You're gonna tilt and lean back and support yourself through your hands. Okay, pressing straight up like this here. All right, and your head is up. You should feel that stretching your shoulders if you need to. You can move your body forward some, keeping your hands right where they are, and you can feel that stretch in the front of your shoulders, okay? Now, obviously, my hand is turned out, so it's gonna be external rotation of the shoulder with this stretch, as opposed to turning inward and stretching either way. But like I said, you can stretch it this way too, and you get a good stretch in your hands as well, okay? So those are some key areas in terms of doing stretches. If you're standing and you're not on the floor to stretch your shoulders like that, usually what I have people do is they'll interlock their hands and they'll stretch it like this to get the front of their shoulders and the inside of their shoulders. And then they can also stretch it up toward the ceiling. So those are some good stretches that you can do for your shoulders, okay? So I target some key areas that you can hit uh, to get a good total body in. You can do all these stretches all at one time right after you do an activity. I highly encourage that you always stretch after you do any form of activity. Um, it's just a way to recover. It's a way to help reduce soreness and so that you don't have any restrictions or tightness later on like that too. And it also helps improve your performance and keep you moving because you need the range of motion and the flexibility to be able to execute a specific skill or activity. Okay, so it helps to improve your performance. Feel free to comment or share. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, just let me know. Uh, other than that, we're good to go. And uh, I thank y'all for your time and look forward to doing some other things with you soon. Okay, take care. Bye.